This is Halloween. This is Halloween. <laughs> Halloween. 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 <laughs> I was listening to that earlier today. Yes. I love I love the jingle. I love it. Welcome everybody. Hi. Hi everyone. Welcome to our podcast. My name is Jaren. My pronouns are he, him. And my name is Heather. I go by she, her. And we are typically divergent. Yay! First episode! Welcome, everyone. We are so <laughs> excited to be here. But first, we do have a little introduction that we would like to make. We have a guest um, with us this afternoon. Yeah, so Michael's here with us producing um, some of our first episodes. Thank you so much for helping us out. Yes. He's uh, Jaren's friend who I've just met and now becoming friends with him as well. So thank you. Just as a quick shout out, Michael is the singer and guitarist in the local Fort Wayne band Middle Names. So please go check him out and his band if you have a chance. <laughs> yes, she is so welcoming. She literally welcomed this man into her house the second that she met him. So <laughs> what's your... Uh... What's going on in your world these days? How are you feeling? Uh, pretty good. I feel like, um, like maybe like a seven out of 10 today. Okay. Um, yeah. Like feeling really excited about the podcast, obviously. Oh my God, um, I know. yeah, very yeah. obviously <laughs> nervous at the same time, just being totally honest with our listeners. Cause yes. you know, starting a new journey is both exciting and nerve wracking. Um, you know, life is really good right now. Um, my husband, who is from Canada, came over here um, early in January, and life has been great with him since he's been here. We had to be separated by COVID for a while when we were dating, so um, it's been really nice to have him here. So life is good. Um, I've been dealing with a little bit of inner emotional blockage over um, shopping Lately, mm. had to shop for some clothes, mm. uh, professional outfits, dress for a wedding at the I end hate of this professional month. Professional outfits. Yeah, and clothes, and they're very they fit to a certain body type so well, right. especially if we're talking about like main stores where I don't want to spend a ton of money on tailoring. Right. And I'm at a larger weight than I've been, which there's no shame in that. And she's I, in love, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Get off yes, her ass. In love, you know, there's no shame in that. And I would tell any of my friends that, but we know when it's like ourselves, it's so much harder. And mm. I have no idea what size I'm looking for. So it's just kind of been like a chore and a pain in the ass and. I've just been down on myself a little mm -hmm. bit. So that's kind of, I don't know, some stuff that I'm having a little bit of difficulty with mentally lately, but right. overall pretty good and very excited for the podcast. So good. now I'm going to ask you, what's your vibe like today? Oh my gosh, Heather. I, so like I am a, a high eight and a half, nine today. Oh my God. I, that's awesome. I know. So I had my second EMDR session yesterday and Ooh. we can get into therapy and stuff at another time, but today yes. we are not doing that. We're not going to hit you guys too hard with the heavy stuff right off the bat. But yes, I had a really great session yesterday, a little back and forth with like uh, my own version of like self-acceptance and love because um, you know, like that is a, an everyday thing, but to piggyback off of what you mentioned earlier about the shopping for clothes one i hate shopping for clothes it is the worst thing oh, um God, yes as a former it's such a chore it is such a chore and as a former fat kid like having Ugh. to put on clothes that like you know they they feel fine when you're in a certain position like when you're standing up mm. and then you sit down and they're different <gasps> yes and like cutting into your belly and stuff yes. like you just want to be comfortable right and right. that's that's been my problem too but then like with a lot of like mainstream stores because again not doing tailoring or anything like mm -hmm. that you get this certain size and clothes are still expect like even in a regular store like it's expensive right for suiting or anything like that mm -hmm. you don't feel comfortable and then when you finally find the one that does it's almost like other parts of it don't fit right and it's right. just this constant struggle to find the one thing and it just becomes this giant task quest to be on right. to deal with right and all it yeah. does is make I, and I can't speak for everybody else but I know that when Every time you put on a pair of, you put on like a shirt or a pair of jeans and you think they're going to fit. And mm. then that confirmation of like, mm, not, f not a hundred percent comfortable mm -hmm. in them. So then it's just like one more small defeat. It's like when you're in sales and yes. you get like nine no's before you finally get a yes on a sale. And yeah. it's like, I don't like that. Yeah. So, um, or, or, or bringing in like multiple sizes. This is my thing. Bringing in right. multiple sizes, being open to the fact that in this store, Maybe I'm a 12 in this store. Maybe I'm literally oh, an 18. Terrible. Bringing in multiple. And then you're trying on and trying on. And then you literally like either hand the person in the dressing room or like hang up like 10 things.
things and it's mm-hmm. like I had every intention to walk out buying something if it right. fit but literally all 10 of these things yep. didn't fit in a multitude of sizes like it's so frustrating yep. and when they're like can I get you another size I'm like, like no. you can leave me the fuck alone no. Just, I know that you're doing your job, but (laughs) please go away. But like, yes, you know, I am also in love and we are coming up on winter and Mm, body season, cozy season, honey. (laughs) Bodies are meant to fluctuate and we celebrate all body types here. What we don't celebrate is toxicity and judgment. Yeah. Feeling shit about ourselves, which is why I'm admitting to it, but it's like, I'm, I'm getting in my own head, but right. And you know, know those, those are those are small little steps of self-love that we have to take. And well, somebody today made a comment and they were like, oh my gosh, it's so cold. Why are you wearing shorts? And I was like, because I haven't bought any jeans yet. And I have to buy jeans every winter because I always get a little bigger before the winter. And, (laughs) you know, I used to be, not that I was ever like super thin, but they're at, at my thinnest. I was my most unhealthiest. Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. That's who is he? That was me. Yes. That, absolutely. Yes. And like, yeah, um, it's, I, I 100% agree right. with you. Like looking back on things that I actually feel more happy where I am now. And yet ironically, you know, physically, I know there are things that I need to work on for my mm-hmm. health. And, you know, maybe I'm not at like the bet, like the lowest weight I've ever been, but right. I'm happier. Right. We have to stop looking at that scale and just feeling about how we are feeling about ourselves. But, you know, that self-awareness of like, oh, these clothes were, they fit a little differently. Now I'm more self-aware of my, of my physical mass. And Mm -hmm. that, that like when I'm out walking and I can feel that my clothes are just a little tighter than normal. And I'm like, I am the most uncomfortable. And then Mm -hmm. I, um, I, I think that everybody is looking at me the way that I look at myself and people, the confidence, the self-confidence, right? And people, nobody is looking at you the way that you look at yourself. That's not how it is. And it's like, if you had a friend next to you feeling the same way, right? you'd be telling them like, what are you doing, bitch? Like, don't think that way. Like, this is not how it is. Like you look beautiful. Like you think you're, but you, but it's so much harder to do that for yourself. Like that's where the, that mental health Um, stuff kicks in, you know? (laughs) And you know, my, my partner, loves to cook and we love food and food is his love language and I'm not going to deny myself delicious food just to fit in some sort of societal society's European colonial idea of like what is beauty and you know I Mm -hmm. I am learning and it's I mean I'm not trying to like let myself go you know like I still want to like feel confident but I am pushing that limit a little bit yeah but besides Eat what tastes good like yeah. good tasting food is life like i love right. the european sense of like good food is like it, it's part of like an experience right mm-hmm. and like with your you know with your partner he cooks wonderfully from right. everything you tell me about right. and like my husband will like literally go he's made like from scratch cinnamon rolls and like I'm gonna eat those, and right. not only am I gonna eat those, but I'm gonna eat my three fair of them. Share. I'm, like, gonna, eat I'm three gonna eat of my them. half of the batch that he All makes. Yeah. You know, like I'm gonna eat two now, and then I'll eat the rest of my six. You know, like over the week. Right. <laughs> so, but yeah, you know, I mean, like besides just knowing that that's a thing where I'm like, oh yeah, winter's coming, and that is the only thing that could probably say that is not keeping me out of ten right now because yeah. I'm just like. So many th- great things are happening for um, both of us. This episode is being recorded right now, and we would like to go ahead and thank everybody who has been waiting for this episode to be launched. <laughs> I feel like I gave everybody like the biggest set of blue balls as ever, and I'm so <laughs> sorry. I was born two weeks late. This episode is going to be released two le- two weeks late. Oh, so I love that though. I love that we we thank everyone for their patience. Yes, um, thank you. And, you know, waiting for us to get this going. Um, but I'm actually really excited that our first episode is going to be getting into some Halloween stuff. Yes. Like, I think it's a great way to uh, release our uh, our first episode for this podcast. Yes. Um, it's my favorite holiday, and it was yeah. just perfect that we wanted to launch on Mondays and that we were going to be two weeks behind and that that specific Monday was going to be Halloween. So 
we are going to go ahead and do a Halloween episode for all of you. Before we do that, we are going to draw a tarot card from our personal decks and we're going to discuss those before we get into our topic for today. We have already pulled them out um, and Heather, would you like to discuss um, what kind of deck that you are currently using and what you drew and what that means for you? Sure, yeah. So um, my uh, tarot card is, uh, or my tarot deck is a personal classic tarot deck, um, something that actually my husband Spencer gifted to me, which makes it feel a little extra mm -hmm. special. Um, and today um, I drew the Eight of Swords. Um, I drew it upright. Um, I know that there's some controversy as to whether people recognize the reverse um, when they draw a card or not. I do personally, you know, recognize both depending on how I draw it, but I drew mine upright. And I use um, a source called biddytarot.com. That's what I use to kind of look up the meaning of the tarot cards um, because something you'll learn about Jaren and I both is that we consider ourselves baby witches um, on our journey through learning a little bit more about witchcraft. And our personalized and, crafts as well. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> Part of that is, you know, learning as we go, and we want to share that with our listeners on the podcast, um, but I certainly don't have all of the tarot cards in the universe memorized, so I usually still They're have to use either. a source. So <laughs> I, I use Viddy Tarot. That's not any kind of plug. It's literally just I love the website, so I'm just sharing it with you all. But anyway, so upright um, can mean things like negative thoughts, self-imposed restrictions, imprisonment and victim mentality. Mm. So, I mean, honestly, having pulled that and after talking about, you know, the mental health and the stuff about the clothes and things mm. about, um, you know, my mental health related to, you know, my weight and some things like that, I do feel like actually this card well represents that. I feel like a, a lot of my, my mental health, which there are a multitude of topics within mental health that I think as a podcast, uh, you guys are going to learn that we are going to talk a lot about different mental health topics here. Mm -hmm. um, but just in general, I think a lot of my mental health does deal with self-restriction and the card itself, the woman is blindfolded and sort of tied up around these swords, but it's about learning to take that blindfold off and knowing that you yourself can take away those restrictions. You just have to take that initiative and that no one else is holding you back but yourself like feeling like you're your own worst enemy <laughs> key Gosh. key to so much of my problems and I, I think it well represents some of the stuff that I'm going through that has been bringing me down even mm -hmm. though I'm overall still feeling positive right yeah well wow. so thank you so much for sharing that with yes, us yes absolutely well thank you so um with your uh tarot card reading what did you pull today so, and what's your deck so I have a Starseed Oracle deck by Rebecca Campbell, and we can talk about what a Starseed is and why I have this deck um, specifically another time. Yes, absolutely. Um, but um, this is an Oracle deck, so it's a little bit different than the traditional standard, I think it's like, what, 73 card deck? I'd have to look it up. I actually don't know offhand. <laughs> so for me personally, an Oracle deck would mean that this is a deck that I I. I draw and read for myself and myself only, but that is my personal choice. And they, and again, this is just my personal experience with the Oracle deck. So it's a bit more tailored to my own personal journey for myself. This deck was gifted to me by my partner, Nicholas. Shout out to my future husband. I love you so much. <laughs> so that also makes this deck very special to me because this was my first complete deck. And I drew the Golden Children card and Ooh. Um, the keywords that the card has are inner child, tenderness, innocence, and rare gifts. And the the breakdown of the deck, the, the little booklet that this deck came with, it mentioned a lot of being kind to myself. Mm. And mm. if I am not going to, if I'm not going to allow my friend Heather here or <laughs> anybody else to be mean to themselves why am I so hard on myself and it was just really really touching that this card specifically was drawn because like I would mentioned earlier my original plan and it wasn't necessarily not it wasn't that it wasn't reachable I originally just wanted to release our first episode on the 17th and obviously today is the 31st which is totally okay but I was putting a lot of pressure on myself being like we got to get this done sooner. And mm -hmm. I felt myself rushing and I was like, bro, calm down. 
-hmm. Like, there are a handful of people who said that it was going to happen on the 17th, and, like, they're still asking how things are going. So, obviously, if nobody else has pressure on myself, so I'm like, why in the hell am I being so hard on myself? Yeah. So, and back to, like, the self-love thing, like, you know, you gotta be nice to yourself, bud. And, you know, the things that I'm doing in therapy, like, a lot of inner child work, and we can talk about that, too, on another episode. So I really, I'm really happy with this card for today. Yeah. And obviously, this is only the second draw that we've pulled for the podcast. The first one was when we just practiced talking to into mics, mm-hmm. and it was just like, ah, oh, yeah, like, so much confirmation from yeah for our both guides. of ours yeah and I I think it's interesting I I, I was I was literally gonna comment so us us do it. Feel it feeling our minds here both do of it. our minds so I I actually feel like these are very in sync yet again similar to the first time that we drew when we did our first practice and like kind of run through with a variety of topics and how we wanted to do this podcast and watch watch the next episode we'll get totally opposites now that i'm saying this right like i'm cursing myself here but i feel like a lot of times when we're drawing tarot cards together they've been in sync and Mm -hmm. i feel like they actually point to at the same time how we're feeling for that day and it's just it's been working and i think that's that's pretty interesting in itself so yeah you can definitely tell that our decks are very much in tune with us yeah and that i think that can sometimes take time but yeah they they seem to really really work for us um, yeah. and us together and what we're going through and then the journey with the with this podcast too so right and um we would love to talk more tarot basics another yeah, day absolutely um, we oh my gosh folks we've got so many things we want to talk about <laughs> we really need i specifically for me myself and i i need to like calm down and just focus on the one project that we have for today <laughs> Which was today's homework. I know, but we want to talk about all the things and, so many and not things. not our ADHD coming through. Oh, right? actually, actually, speaking of ADHD, <laughs> um, hold on, I'm so sorry. Uh, oh, it's okay. Um, uh, there is a. It's not today on the 31st of October, but today is the 20th of October. That is when we are recording, and a very special man in my life. Um, deserves a happy birthday. So happy birthday, Lars, my brother. I love you so very much. Um, I just got off the phone with him like 45 minutes ago and he called me and I was like, I'm so sorry. We're about to record. I have to let you go. (laughs) He's like, it's okay. Now you're getting the shout out. So So now he's getting the very first, well, technically second shout out, (laughs) but he's getting the first birthday shout out. And I love you, buddy. Happy birthday. Happy 33rd. Um, you mean the, you mean the world to me. (laughs) <laughs> so <clears throat> all right so before we get started on our topics for today um we want to do a little uniform check with ourselves so all right jaren do you have your pjs and witch hat on no ma'am i'm out of <laughs> uniform today not not us already screwing up for I the know. first episode <laughs> hi i showed up on my first day not in uniform um, I just, All right, I you're ran, fired. Just kidding. I'm I too. own 51% of this company. You can't fire me. <laughs> Folks, we'll talk, <laughs> we'll talk about it another time, but I told Heather I would not do this podcast without her, so Aww. she cannot fire me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> if anything, I think we're more concerned about making sure that the other person is having a good time, that yes. we're, we're like, you know, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but we really want to work hard on this. Yes. So not am, the hardcore empathy mm, coming through. Right. So I am not in uniform today because I just came from work. And I don't have my witch hat yet because it is still in the mail. Yes. So I will take that right up today and hopefully next week I will be halfway in uniform. Yes. <laughs> Are uh, you in uniform? Oh, oh, yes. I mean, um, yeah, I know. I'm like calling you out and then I'm like only half in uniform. So I, so I have my PJs on. I have my comfy clothes ready to chill out and vibe with our whole session here and chill with you. Um, but my witch hat is not on. I just, it, it felt weird wearing a witch hat if you didn't have yours. So right. I'm waiting. So we're, we're only, ha- I'm, I'm only half in uniform today. As a Libra, <laughs> I really appreciate the balance. Yes. Yes. Balance. Speaking of balance, I was thinking about this earlier when I was in the bathroom. Um, because you're a whole ass straight person and I'm a whole ass gay man. Together <laughs> we make one bisexual. Oh my God. I love it. I love it. We're not a bisexual <laughs> podcast. However, if this microphone had a sexuality, 
it would be bisexual. I, I mean, it's standing right in the middle of us all. So uh, it's on the spectrum, right? We're, we're on one, one end and to the right. other and right in the middle is the mic. So <laughs> I'm he here is, for it. And he is standing tall and proud and he is ready yes. to serve you folks some goodness from our podcast. So we have our bisexual mic now. Yes. That's, that's literally its title now. We're using one right now, but we do have two. So that's why we're talking about naming yes. both of them. We are, we're going to decorate them as well. We'll decorate them. <laughs> We're going, we just wanted to be smart about this project and mm -hmm. this is a dream of mine and would really love to uh, just put out into the universe that um, one day we look back at this first episode and I'll look at you and go, God, I sounded so nervous. <laughs> but I, I do have to get one more thing off my chest before we get into today's subject and I just, I have to say this, I am so excited I could poop my pants. <laughs> I, I love it. I love how comfortable with each other. Just oh, we're yeah, we're about to poop our pants. We're so we're so we're excited. Poop our pants. <laughs> so, not the not the inner child being so. being okay with our inner child together. Correct. in this podcast, Correct. that is literally what it's about, right? Yes. Like just being ourselves and not giving a shit. <laughs> Or not, giving no, a or, shit. No, or giving or a or shit. I was going to say, ma'am, you, you, you're onto something we got, there. We got to be careful. <laughs> you, you do have to be careful. But I might get too excited. Oh, just... goodness. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll still support you. I won't judge. There's no judging here this on this is, podcast. This is a judgment-free zone. Yes. The only thing we judge is ourselves. <laughs> the only thing we judge is ourselves. Yes. <laughs> so, Heather, would you like to take it away with uh, the first portion of our topic for today. Yes, yes. So um, as we mentioned, this episode is releasing on our favorite holiday of the year, which is Halloween. Halloween. Welcome, foolish mortals, to our first episode. Also known as Samhain, <laughs> if you follow any witch religions. What would you, what would you yes. say? Like Samhain is specifically a, a Wiccan religion or it's a turn of the season? Sure, sure. So, um, you know, there is the witch's wheel, which is a set of holidays or sabbats that go, you know, around the, the year. There is the religious aspect to witchcraft, which is Wiccan, the, mm -hmm. the Wiccan religion. And there's a lot of association with that. But at the same time, a lot of those holidays are also celebrated by general pagans, witches in general. You do not have to be Wiccan with the religious aspect of witchcraft to also celebrate those holidays. Um, and in fact, which we'll get into, uh, Samhain comes from Celtic pagan practices of over 2,000 years ago. And wow. that is not... Wiccan in itself, so it mm -hmm. has roots in just general paganism okay. from Europe. Cute. So, Work. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Halloween is actually um, another name for it uh, is All Hallows' Eve, as many people know. What comes from that is uh, hollow equals holy with roots in Old English, German, and Norse languages. So All Hallows' Eve, Halloween, comes before All Hallows' Day, which is also known as All Saints' Day on November 1st, followed mm. by All Souls' Day on November 2nd. And that, of course, being the Christian side of things, which I'll get into how that came to be as well. But as we can see, there's a mixing of different religions around this holiday. Again, uh, Samhain uh, is Gaelic. Uh, it's actually spelled very differently from how it sounds in English, but it's spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N. It's not Samhain. It's not Samhain. It's Samhain is how we would pronounce it. And that's representative of the pagan Celtic practices from over 2,000 years ago that used to be sometimes called the Pagan Festival of the Dead or the Ooh. Eve of Celtic New Year. So we're already getting Ooh. into that spooky, spooky, spooky. Spooky, spooky. Um, so, and that took place on October 31st to November 1st, but sometimes was upwards of a three to six day celebration because we all like to party whether that's 2,000 years ago or today. So I'm here for the multi, you know, day celebration of Halloween. If there's anything <laughs> that humans love to do is reproduce and party yeah so we're here for that which we'll get into not, that even not more us, not that not the fertility and uh love right. making right <laughs> right not me though i'm i'm like in bed at nine o'clock <laughs> <laughs> uh nowadays me too now that i'm getting better sleep <laughs> now that my husband isn't two hours behind in uh in canada and in, in mountain time but anyways so the in terms of some other practices so as we know also the day of the dead with roots in mexico occurs around november 1st through the 2nd and then connecting some of this together 
together with the Christian practices as well as the, the Celtic pagan practices. So Samhain was moved to May by a pope around the 5th century and transformed into a day to celebrate saints and martyrs, hence the All Saints Day and the All okay. Souls Day that comes around that time. For those who still are Catholic Christian you know, you might be familiar with that. I remember um, being raised in the church and being told something in some sort of prayer, like remember the Sabbath and keeping it holy. Yeah. Do you know how long ago that was? And do you know, like, even to this day, yeah. like, what was so holy about the Sabbath? Yeah, like, like, so like Sunday school and learning about right. all the, the different things that I'm like, okay, this is a lot to keep track of, too. Right. Like, there's so many days, right? Um, <laughs> but in the ninth century, it was moved back to October to keep in line with the fact that the people continued their fire festival around the time mm. of October and Samhain anyway, so in sort of a sense of defiance, um, and at the time when Christianity was becoming a religion that was spreading where, you know, pagan pagan traditions were there before, mm-hmm. Christianity spreading amongst the people and trying to fit in with the holidays. As mm-hmm. we know, there's other holidays where there's controversy around that too, yep. um, which we'll get into as those holidays come up, that, you know, uh, there's a lot of different religious practices that start to mix throughout history, which I always find very interesting to read about from at least even a historic perspective. Right. Um, history would have been a lot more exciting if it was told as a story and not just like dates, people's names yes. and big events. And then like no other information behind it. Yeah. That's, that's why those, some of those Netflix historic shows are so fun. Like so the fun. Vikings show. Yes. There's a, there's a Vikings show from A and E, right. And uh-huh. then there's the Vikings show on Netflix and like, learning about some of, like, the Norse pagan stuff from there. And obviously there's creative license with that. But, like, learning through, like, an adventure through a story is always so much more fun. But anyway, so moving back to the the time of the year. So really our Halloween and Samhain takes place at a time between the autumn equinox and the winter solstice, Hmm. which are other important times for witches. Mm -hmm. Um, It represents the end of the harvest and beginning of the dark half of the year. Mm. So, ooh, darkness. (sighs) <sighs> the winter blues. Yes, the winter blues. But also back then, winter blues also meant uh, perhaps uh, not making it through the rest of the season, right? Right. You know, mass crops. Depression. Uh, yeah, more like mass can't eat mm-hmm. and uh, the cold and not keeping up with that firewood, right? right. So uh, we're not making it this time of the year. So a little bit more important to try to stay alive and it being a tough time (laughs) at this time. Um, a lot of people probably hear of this, even if you don't know too much about Samhain, but we consider Halloween to be a time where the veil is at its thinnest. Mm. So the veil meaning a sort of like border between the world of the living and the dead. Mm -hmm. And when it's at its thinnest, the dead may cross over and walk amongst the living. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's a time at which the Fey realm uh, may also make its presence more known. The Fey, like fairies. Yes, okay. like fairies, but also goblins and other creatures that might be Fey-like. Okay. Um, so those creatures, there was a superstition about protecting homes and crops around this time because although some we like to think are fun and you know, just general mischief, there was also fear that they could, you know, spoil crops. And Mm -hmm. again, it's important that they have their stores of food before, you know, these difficult winter months. That would explain why I got called a fairy a lot when I was in (laughs) middle school and elementary school and basically all of the years of grade school, because um, obviously if you can't tell, and I mentioned earlier that I have a male partner, I was called a fairy and um, I think it's because they were afraid I was going to eat their motherfucking food. And trust me, honey, (laughs) I will eat your motherfucking food. Take the treats, bitch. Take the treats. Take the treats. You know, if you got to be called a name that was meant by some to be negative, you might as well Mm. steal their treats and have fun with it right oh like start gosh. that mischief bitch well I, I like brownies if anybody wants to Ooh. donate fudge yeah, brownies we're, we're, with we're nothing here for, on them we're, we're here for the brownies if anyone would like to donate brownies to the podcast we're here for that uh, we are, <laughs> we're gonna have to make sure you eat one first before we eat them because we want to make sure it's safe <laughs> yeah if you send it in the mail I mean yeah, yeah we, yeah. we want to know who it's Which, from and uh, 
Yeah. We're just going to have to dump it. Sorry. Yeah. So people wanted to protect their homes. Um, and sometimes offerings were made to ensure that there was no ill will. So again, you know, see, maybe you just need an offering. Maybe maybe they just needed to offer you some extra treats back <laughs> <laughs> And then um, just also in terms of like fey or creatures that could come through. One thing I found interesting, which I didn't even know that it had this level of history, but uh, the headless horsemen riding flame-eyed horses were actually a thing and symbol of you know, Celtic, Samhain, you know, times, and it was said to be a death omen. So you definitely okay. did not want to see them riding by, which I feel like that's pretty fitting for a lot of the movies that exist regarding the Headless Horseman, oh, right? Or yeah. the Headless Horseman. I mean, I have yet to see a video where someone's like, oh, the Headless Horseman. Come take my head. So, <laughs> what's that one movie where she's like, oh, your arms are so big. Kiss me. <laughs> Your horse is so oh headless. Goodness, what is that? Kiss me. I, I cannot remember. <laughs> of course, on on demand, I cannot remember these things. But yeah, you probably don't want that. He's he's probably gonna mm. steal your head. So mm. and yeah, probably not a good thing. Mm. So um, but Sorry, getting I'm into so some of the. <laughs> But getting into some of like the more witchcraft and um, this is this is one thing that is actually associated more so with the Wiccan religion. Um, okay. But, you know, from what I understand, pagans who don't practice more of the religious side, which I would say that's more so me mm. um, from what you've told me yourself as well. Mm. Um, there is still recognition of this, but the, the maiden, the mother and the crone. So mm -hmm. the three parts of like the life cycle of of the of the witch of the right. head witch right of the goddess the crone goddess also known as the hag or the old one begins her powerful reign bringing in the cold winter which is a time at which survival was not guaranteed in older times um she was also known as the queen of the night um we would consider her even nowadays when we honor her she's not someone to necessarily be feared, but almost to be um, respected because she's wise in her old age. And she helps prepare people for death and prepare the dead for, for a variety of things. And then we, we have this acknowledgement that after the crone, there is rebirth as well. Right. So we know that there is a happy, hopeful aspect to after all of these dark you know dark months mm -hmm. um so coming alongside with that generally Samhain um in terms of pagan practices a lot of it revolves around honoring the dead and the departed mm -hmm. so offering of food and drinks to one's ancestors leaving a window open so that the spirit can come through into the home leaving an empty space for them at mm -hmm. the table even like leaving a, a chair out which i mean i'm actually familiar with some some people do that you know like when they're missing loved ones mm -hmm. and stuff like that and it's a way to currently still you know respect for recently lost loved ones and just knowing that that's been a practice for thousands of years amongst uh, amongst people right but at the same time, while that can be somber, <laughs> comes a night of mischief, fun, love, and fertility themes as well. So again, this common theme of the fact that the upcoming months were to be difficult for survival historically, there was a sense of defiance against danger and death. Um, and so that was embraced. And then the mischief itself could be blamed easily on the Fae. Mm -hmm. So you could kind of like get away with it. Right. right. And be like, Oh, I'm just going to go have fun. And Oh, that, that was the, that was the Fae. That was like the Fae influencing us and we're to have a night of debauchery. Right. <laughs> Maybe the reason why the Fae, actually were the way that they were is because people would do stuff and then blame them for it so they're like well you know what yeah you're, you're, gonna, as well. you're gonna talk bad about me i might as well do the things that you're saying i'm doing because um uh, in my own little world i'm just over here just a little do let do and <laughs> nobody can see what i just did but I, doing your little wand motion my little wand motion wingardium like, leviosa <laughs> well i was thinking more like disney like tinkerbell okay okay i'm yeah. here for that I you mean, got a little have a little pixie dust. Yeah, oh, there we go. Mm, honey, pixie dust. You're, it's it's going along with the the gay the gay theme. I love it. We gotta have that pixie dust. And again, if you're gonna be called that, why not be that? Well, I know it's just whatever. It's not today's topic. You keep going. <laughs> but I love it. I love it. So in terms of some different symbols that are represented in the history, um, as well as still even utilized today, but you know 
didn't even know that they had historic roots to them. So I thought this was kind of interesting is that trick or treating that has been a practice that has been in existence for a really long time might have been in just different ways. So it was considered more symbolic. So you were making offerings to appease ghosts and other entities. So for example, in Ireland, little cakes were given to those who dressed up or per, um, little cakes, little, little cakes. cakes, not the magicians episode. Oh my from gosh. Magicians on Netflix. Everyone. We're we are both a huge fan. Yes. Little cakes. They were given to those who dressed up or per, uh, partook in mumming, um, which was a practice of dressing up and then singing carols for the dead or departed, which is like, okay, not not like pretty much like Yule Christmas time, right. but we're doing Yule. it for the dead. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to think of like, I want to know what those carols were. Like, this like I wish Halloween. I could find these this like these artifacts. Halloween. Yeah, I mean, currently, currently. We've, we've got our own carols, but I'm, I'm curious what they looked like 2000 years ago, right? Like singing to the dead i don't know interesting mm. so then jack-o-lanterns were also used back then um they were representative of wandering spirits and it was an offer of protection while carrying one and i think of that in the sense of like you know we give those to kids right to carry when mm -hmm. they're trick-or-treating which we want to protect our kids so um i thought I thought that was interesting. And they actually used to use turnips, though. And if you've ever seen those photos, they are hideous. Like the old turnip, like yes. jack-o'-lanterns, they're so weird. Yes. It's like the, <laughs> it's, it is the equivalent of like what Halloween costumes used to look like. It's like actually terrifying yeah. with, with doing the absolute least amount of work. Like they effort. could make a horror movie currently out of just what used to be considered fun right. old Halloween practices, like making in creepy black and white and yeah. like, Oh God. <laughs> um, but also, um, I'm a huge nerd and I like anime <laughs> and it, thinking of the turnips, it made me think of turnip head, which is like a scarecrow type character in Howl's moving castle. So shout out to any of our listeners who watch anime. <laughs> I don't want to be a poopy faced tomato nose, but I did take three years of Japanese in high school. It's pronounced anime. Oh my God, Jaren. <laughs> <laughs> not Freaking me being, a man. Not me being a weeaboo. <laughs> being a total weeb. Well, anyways. I'm sorry. So. Can, you can continue. Can't, can't even pronounce it right. I'm sorry, guys. It's not I'm, that you I'm can't a, pronounce I'm a, it right. I'm a, I'm a just... terrible. I'm a terrible weeb. No, just stop. <laughs> but, um, but going along with the jack o' lantern, so candle lighting was um, definitely also a thing back then. So just in general, to illuminate darkness, ward off dark spirits, purifying the home, which of course I think. When we light candles, and especially in witchcraft type practices, mm -hmm. pagan practices, that's still very much a symbol today. Oh, yeah. um, so it's definitely something that's carried with us. Um, and then the last symbol that I wanted to talk about was also something that I didn't realize that there was this much information on it. I actually cut out notes that I had for this podcast on it, mm -hmm. but apples. Apples apparently have a ton of history and symbolism with Samhain and Halloween related practices. So they were symbols of the realm of the dead, but they were also <gasps> a sign of fertility and abundance like at the when, same time. When Snow White, you think that's why they use the witch used an apple? Ooh. I didn't even think about that. Because I'm just now, after, after a, hearing really you say thought. that, because the apple does turn into a green skull. Yeah, and like she, yeah, the with the poison. Cauldron. Yeah. Ooh, I didn't even think about that. And and, the, and uh, to an attract day, her to the poison the with the fact that like maidens, as I'm going to get into it, uh -huh. uh, used it as like a form of, you know, divination for love or, you know, finding your loved one. So it's like attractive to young maidens to like, you know, get that apple, right? There we oh go my with God, that bitch. need to survive. So even, even bobbing apples itself um, was a Celtic tradition. So again, bobbing for apples dates back a very long time ago. Uh, the first person, usually a young female, to bite into an apple would be the next allowed to marry. And then girls who place their apple under their pillow could dream of their future partner so i mean i'm just trying to think of like placing an apple under your pillow to find like your loved one and i'm like how uncomfortable would that be like especially with pillows 2000 years ago like what like they don't they didn't have like those freaking like hundred dollar pillows that we can get nowadays with the no. memory foam and shit they had like three goose feathers in right. and then they're putting an apple underneath it like it, who's my husband it's basically just like a bunch of like eraser shavings before erasers were even invented yeah like, yeah you're gonna put your head on this you're the heaviest 
appendage on your body yes. that you're that you have to naturally learn how to hold up. You're gonna put this on this little flat sheet, and uh, you will feel an apple under there. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah, pain and everything comes reward, right? That's what we always would teach women. Like pain is beauty, and pain is finding love. Oh, so, honey, I'm getting so much reward these days because I'm going through <laughs> so much in therapy. Right. Oh my god, it's so great right. that you would say the that. Pain Thanks for reminding me, though. See. Good, good. Sorry, everyone. ADHD moment. Just, <laughs> just have yeah, a Yeah, but your off. therapy's been so good. So, I mean, it's good to think about it and all the the positives it's bringing and working through, working through the pain to get to some really right. positive. And back uh, to the show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is how we are, guys. Just so you know. Thanks for thanks for joining us. And if you love this, <laughs> we've got so much more of it to come. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so last but not least with the apples oh, is, right. um, We're still with apples. I know I told you it's a lot of stuff so with much. apples, um, is you, so sometimes some of the practice would be to actually peel an apple, allow the skin to fall as it may, and then scrying or performing like a divination type of thing mm -hmm. for future love, which is what scrying sort of is. And so it's like kind of like tea leaves, but you're seeing like the pattern in an apple to see who your future love would be. And like in my head, this is seriously not to minimize it. If someone scries through apples, power to you. I don't know how you probably do it. I would love to learn. But at the same time, in and in baby witch form and also just thinking back to those practices and like I'm thinking how an apple works and like as it browns and stuff and trying to see a pattern and be like how am I supposed to differentiate between like this dude and this dude who both have the same hairstyle and like same look to their face and everything like how how are we going to differentiate to find it like well i think some of it also i mean sometimes you know if you stare at something long enough you eventually just start to hallucinate yeah oh absolutely so yeah. it's kind of like staring at the clouds and it's like yeah. you know, after 20 minutes staring at one specific cloud that cloud is now sitting next to you and it's yeah. talking to you so um, I don't know. I don't particularly, I love to eat apples, but, um, I, I already yeah. know who my I mean, current and continuous love is and I, who I want that to be. So like, I'm not going to go scrying for other partners yeah. in an apple, you know? I'm just picturing like a girl mm. in like, I don't know, those ancient times staring at like an apple peel being like, oh, it must be Sir William. <laughs> Sir William. It must be him like through the apple skin. And I'm like. You go, girl. And then her Sarah cousin. William. And then her first cousin comes up and is like, "Actually, that's me." <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Because you know you have your cousin. ADHD moment, and then but your not first House of the cousins. Dragon moments with the the interfamilial relationships. Have you have you been watching like House of the Dragon? I'm not Game a GOT fan. Ugh. I haven't even start. I haven't even tried it, so I can't say I'm not a fan if I haven't really tried okay. something. But so. as, as as most people know, even if you're not watching it, it's like there's a lot of like the the it, keep it in the family kind of relationship. Oh, are you so, talking about like how uh, that one country's queen just recently passed on and they love to keep their stuff in the family? Oh, I mean, there's that too, but that's a whole mm. nother story. But uh, yeah, so the, it just, it just made me think of that. And I, I love that you brought that up. Don't come for me, everybody. We all know if, if you are not, if your country has not been colonized by England and you, empathy, yes, let's be sad that somebody has passed on. However... Is it a bad thing that she's gone? Probably. It, it's like what not. it's like what it all represented. It's exactly. is it what it there still represents, right? Right. There we go. Yes. Yes. But But now there's a white man in charge of England and all those other countries and we all know what happens when white men are in charge. Mm, yeah. Now they've got that whole prime minister debacle too. That's that'll be interesting. Yes. Also also <laughs> We're just, getting so off topic. I love it. If, if nobody could tell we are white, but even white people are sick of white people's bullshit. Yes. Oh my God. So, Thank you for saying that. Yeah. We're not like, going to get into politics today, but yeah. like we just basically kind of like shat on our own skin color and we're, we're, we're just as much tired of it as any other race and any other yes. individual out there. But quick shout out when this podcast releases, don't forget that next week is voting week. Oh please yes. Vote, please yes. vote. Please vote. I'm so glad that you said that because I was actually, I made a note I made a note in my head to make a note yes. to add into next week up next, next week's episode <gasps> to Yay. say Please make vote. sure you vote because tomorrow it's the second right. Uh yeah. So or, well yeah like it's the it's Tuesday of the the first like the yep. what is that the eighth the eighth. Oh Tuesday the eighth not the second. 
Um, yeah, November 8th, which is, it's usually always a Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, it's a Tuesday. So it's the second Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. So on the sec- on today's episode, yes. Remember to voting vote. day. And then next week. <laughs> yes, next week and then um we'll November keep, 8th. We'll continue to remind those folks. Yes. Yes, it's very important. All right. So, so let's get into the last part of the celebration of Halloween and Samhain before we get into some extra spoopy talk about a special movie that came out recently. Oh my gosh, I completely forgot to tell the audience to let them know, hey, there is going to be spoiler alerts. Oh, yeah, so. absolutely. Sorry, Heather, go ahead and take no, it No, you're okay. So um, part of when we're going to talk about um, some of the different witches' wheel of the year holidays is we want to kind of make some recommendations um, and just put some thoughts out there about how we could celebrate in our craft related to those holidays. Mm-hmm. So again, talking about Samhain. Um, and then just to clarify, when we talk about the craft um, or witchcraft, this is often something highly personal, which we recognize. And so these are just recommendations. We are still baby witches on our own journeys and sharing with you what we have been learning. Um, so again, these are our recommendations from what we have been learning lately. And um, we just want to share those with you. So as always, celebration and participation could be done on your own or with a coven. Having fun with a group of people or on your own doing something personal is... You know, both awesome. Totally valid. It's um, whatever you're comfortable with. Yep. I think, first of all, it's important to mention just having fun participating in costume and, you know, allowing um, sort of your inner child to enjoy those moments of mysticism and things that you always did as a kid. There, there's there's stuff in that that I feel like in itself is celebratory of the season. Um, mm-hmm. So there's no, there's no need, especially in our biz- busy lives, to go above and beyond. Like, that's also good. Mm-hmm. So that's not to say, like, oh, I'm being a bad witch because I didn't do this, 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 and that. Like, that's the number one thing not to do, and we don't want to promote that. So right. just celebrating the season in general and getting festive, I think, is one way to celebrate because, I mean, that's how the Celtic pagans did over 2,000 years ago, too. But um, just some other additional things is, you know, certainly if you do have a witch's altar, um, having that altar reflect the season. Um, I didn't include that, the stuff in that, like the different, some of the other symbols and like the herbs and stuff that are representative of the season in this podcast, because I didn't want to drill on about a list of information. If people have questions like that, feel free to ask us on Facebook. I'm more than willing to give a list out of some suggestions. Um, But having your altar reflect the season, getting that, you know, ready throughout the month of October, or, you know, even if you're just doing it a couple days ahead and then, you know, sitting by your altar a little bit on Samhain, um, can be a nice way to get your household, get yourself into that mode of the season. And then exploring grief and loss of loved ones with those around you, listening and respecting any signs we may receive from the spirits and our ancestors, um, based on the things that we talked about, visiting graves or setting up a place to honor familiar familial spirits within the home as well. So if you have a graveyard that a lot of your family is buried at, you know, it might be a good time to bring uh, fresh flowers or different items of remembrance for them um, and to honor them. And then going a little bit different direction with things uh, based off of other uh, symbols and uh, themes of the season would be love and fertility spellcraft and sex magic, which which hell yeah i'm not personally super familiar with that yet but it is something that i was reading up on is something that is definitely celebratory of the season and i'm i'm here for it Mm -hmm. i just don't actually know what i'm doing with that so i will fully admit that and then one thing that i'm sort of partaking in myself a little bit this season but uh the kitchen and house related witchcraft some things that i've been doing is um using ingredients from the fall that may be expiring soon so like if you went and picked apples earlier in the season using those apples whether you want to can them make them into applesauce some pies do you sell apples from your trip yeah i do can i have one before absolutely. i go absolutely okay And then working to preserve things. um, And then just preparing your home, wardrobe, other things for those cooler days. So it can be kind of 
cleansing. Yes, sweater weather. Sweater weather. I love sweater weather. <laughs> I watched that video today. Oh my god, I have I have not seen that in a bit, but I knew exactly what we were talking about. But in conclusion, um, the really big point that I wanted to get across for our listeners was that this is a time for celebrating as a community to honor our dead, to understand our time on this earth is limited, and enjoy a sense of freedom and gaining perspective from those before us to unlock new creativity and manifestations for our future. We acknowledge our shadows and death in order to acknowledge all that is the wonder of life. I know, I know I've been actively listening. Did we mention shadow work? We did not, okay. um, but a, it is something that you could definitely do. Just a smidge bit out there, everybody. If you don't know what shadow work, shadow work is, that is working on your trauma. Yes. Our favorite T word here on typically divergent besides the word typically, <laughs> work on that trauma. Yeah, open, absolutely. Whenever you are ready, open that wound, figure out what it looks like. And I love it. it. And now, now is the time to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Also, I want to see. I want to see what your altars look like. If you have an altar, or you know, and it doesn't even have to be craft related. Um, and by craft, I mean like anything that's not anything that's about anything that we're talking about today, um, or even of any sort of religion or following um, that you believe in. But if you, and, and an altar could even just be. Well, you know, a little area of your personal favorite items. Mm -hmm. And I'd love mm -hmm. to see what your personal favorite items are, folks. Um, I haven't been able to put my altar up or keep it up in several years because I just continuously keep moving. And so hopefully you won't have to do that much longer anymore soon. So uh, I, I want to get some ideas because when I look up altars on Google, I, I'm getting a lot of like um, white face Jesus. And, uh, <laughs> I... Uh, I don't you, you gotta put witch in front of that. <laughs> no, you know, <laughs> pagan. We got we got work on those keywords there. <laughs> I'm, 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 I might get something different that way. I'm, I'm not the brightest crayon in the box, but I am definitely a bold color, honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it. Uh, you and you do bring up a good point. I think a, a, an important word to say is that um, about gatekeeping, right? So like oh, we don't yeah. we. We do not gatekeep here. I mean, that girl boss gatekeep shit, but like, we do not, we do not gatekeep here, especially knowing that like we are new into our own witchcraft practices and learning. And I know even myself, like, I've run into the whole like gatekeeping aspects on what they call witch talk and like different things like that. And we are, we are not here for that. So I really liked how you mentioned like, you know, just your altar can look like so many different things, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't have to be like one particular like no. look, like you don't have to go to Google images and be like, I need to copy this. Like it's supposed to be about you. And then also if you would like to add things that are representative of the season or the holiday, if you celebrate it, awesome. Then you do that. Right. But you know, it's, you don't have to follow a certain practice or what someone says. No, just, just fucking be nice. Yeah. Just be nice. Just be, be nice. <laughs> Love it. So, so, oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> if you can't that, tell that we're I'm getting excited going to the next thing. If you can't tell we're from the Midwest because we just said, Oh, oh. <laughs> before we move on to yes. the movie, um, please let us know, um, how you plan on celebrating Halloween or Samhain this year. We would love to see your photos if you're in a costume. Um, yes, yes, please do, guys. We love it. Yes. So, are we ready? Oh, my God. I'm ready. So, right. spoiler warning. Again, please consider moving yourself to a, a timestamp, which will insert that information. Yep. Um, spoiler alerts regarding the Halloween Ends movie. But Jaren is going to lead us in a discussion about this super spooky, Ooh. awesome culmination of a huge franchise that has existed for a very long time um, and has been a part of our culture for a while, too. 44 years. That's, that's how that's Well, it's, how it's older than us. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> Makes me feel I... good about something, right, with my, my age being over 30 at this point. <laughs> it does. So when we were talking about what we we're going to do for today's topic, we knew the history stuff that we wanted to talk about. And mm -hmm. not every episode is going to be about that, but I was like... Yo, Heather, the new Halloween Ends movie is coming out in a couple days. Why don't we go ahead and talk about that movie? Yeah. And, like, selfishly, it's my favorite Halloween movie franchise. Um, and, like, honest to God, like, you literally took the name of a holiday and created a movie series out of it and then made money off of it. Capitalism, baby. Mm-hmm. All right. So, Halloween Ends. Woo! The The final, potentially, final 
Halloween movie in the entire franchise. Um, this movie sets in present day Haddonfield four years since the last movie. Halloween Kills, by Halloween the way. Halloween Kills. Excuse me. Starts with a young man named Mr. Corey, who is babysitting a little brat named Jeremy, <gasps> a Halloween shit. classic. <laughs> Now, before we get into this, we would like to go ahead and let our audience know that we do not condone the use of violence. Um, I like to use my words, even though I'm a fawner, but again, <laughs> we do not condone violence on this podcast, and I'm not saying that that little shithead deserved to die, Mm-mm. but I but mean, that door. that door, it hit him right in the face, and you know what? That's that- all I wanted. I just, know. just break his nose. Just, like, oh. I know. And does that make us bad people? Mm, no. no. Great. We're, we're morally great. Right. <laughs> if you haven't seen the movie and you're still listening and you're judging us right now, maybe you should go watch the movie yes, first. Yes, please go watch it. It's literally in the first <laughs> five minutes. And it's literally the directors and everybody being like, Yo, like we are, we are here. This is Halloween. This is this is Halloween. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. <laughs> this, this is, is Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> so we we are Halloween, and like we are here to show up. That like we've been running for forty four years, and we still fucking got it. So Jeremy plays a nasty prank on Mr. Corey, and it sets the tone for the entire movie. This is when the trauma for Mr. Corey starts. Mm-hmm. So, Lori, uh, played by the famous Jamie Lee Curtis. Woo! Um, scream queen! Scream queen um, is currently living in a cute little home with her granddaughter, Allison. Corey has a run-in with some local punks um, who give him a hard time, and they, later down the movie, call him Kid Killer. That's when he meets Lori. I need to add on to this. Tell me. I, I loved when Jamie Lee Curtis just walks up and is like, are you going to do it or am I? Oh, and like yes. the whole slashing the tires thing, like uh, again, like, mm, no, they, they definitely deserve that. They like, you know, that. and it was, it was that moment where I'm just like, Oh my God, Jamie Lee Curtis is such a freaking badass. Like I right. love her. And she's just like, here, do this. And I'm like, Oh, I would do it. If Jamie Lee Curtis told me to slash somebody's tires because they, and like validated me be like mm-hmm. what I was experiencing from these bullies. Right. I'd be like, thank you. Absolutely. Because it is, <laughs> I mean, granted these kids are younger than him, but it is like his generation yeah. of the bullying that he is experiencing because of this accident that everybody thought that he wasn't responsible for. Yeah. They have a little run in. Um, Corey is taken to the hospital um, by Laurie. Do I say that right? Laurie takes Corey to the hospital Mm -hmm. where he meets Allison. And it is the standard horror movie meet cute, which is a real thing. It happens in um, (laughs) rom-coms. He is, he is getting assistance from Allison, Laurie's granddaughter. And already we're seeing in the very beginning that there is some misogynistic um, connotations towards Allison and she doesn't stand up for herself which is showing us that she does not, well, for me personally, I noticed that she doesn't have a whole lot of self-confidence to stand Mm -hmm. up for herself. And she is probably accepting the treatment that she feels that she deserves because her grandmother is Laurie Strode. Yeah. Who is Michael Myers' sister. And she was picked on by the entire town. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of trauma there and you can tell that she like Allison, like Lori has her own stuff, right? But then Allison has a lot of her own trauma to unpack, especially because she had more of a run in and Halloween kills right. um, with Michael, you know, losing her mom through that encounter and stuff, which was really tragic. So I feel like she's still doing a lot of recovery for herself, but like she's not in therapy as far as we know or anything like that. So unfortunately, you know, leading to some potentially toxic relationships and stuff, too. Yes. Later, they go to a party, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, even before then, um, Lori is at the grocery store, and she is ambushed by a woman whose sister was attacked in the second movie, um, showing us that Michael Myers has traumatized and hurt a lot of people in this town. And it all of that responsibility is placed on Lori's back. Because mm-hmm. they blame her, um, saying that she antagonized him and that she wanted all of this to happen when really she didn't. She was trying to protect herself and save herself. And mm-hmm. it just is so it just so happens that in this specific trilogy, 
it was affecting way more people in the town than what it had in the other movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like they all call him the boogeyman. There's a lot. Yes. There's a lot that I, I think Halloween Kills brought up a lot of the community aspects, yes. and then that's continuing into this movie, and we see that it's still really affecting everyone. Um, and then Lori, it's interesting to see how she deals with it, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's she she herself has been in like rehab right for like her alcoholicism Mm -hmm. and like all of these kinds of things and she's writing Um, a book because she's trying to help process she's trying to help herself process this problem these problems yeah so unlike her granddaughter in comparison she actually is trying to work through some of her stuff and i feel like she's even when she's being dealt with these things she's kind of doing this a little bit of the turn the other cheek and kind Mm -hmm. of that acceptance and you know is she happy when she hears those things no but she's dealing with it she's not responding in like you know a violent or like thrashing out kind of way she acknowledges it and needs to keep moving which i think is i think that's a positive thing to see for her like i like seeing some of her healing in this movie yes i have too so later in the movie allison takes Corey to a party that she didn't originally want to go to and while they're having a good time on the dance floor, Corey runs into little Jeremy from the beginning's mother, um, who is still grieving, of course, totally pallid. He does not take the way that she speaks to him well because he's having a good time and she notices that he's having a good time. And then she makes him feel bad. For a split moment, he was able to forget mm-hmm. that something bad happened in his life. And then she reminded him. And then that's... It's triggering. It, it triggers. Yes, yeah. a trigger. It literally sends this man down... A rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. Um, they, Allison and Corey are having a moment outside of the establishment where she's like, hey, like, you know, I, I'm here with you because, you know, like we have, we have something in common. Mm-hmm. People think of you as a certain way and they think that they, they know who you are and they think the same way about me. And he says, they look at you as a survivor and I'm just a kid killer. We are not the same. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Similar, yep. similar social dynamic issues. The I guess if we want to continue to use the word trauma, their mm-hmm. trauma is not the same. Correct. Yeah. Um, Agreed. So which is really, really sad. Corey leaves. Walk, try, he's walking himself home. He gets beat up by some kids, and uh, same kids from the beginning. And they essentially he is knocked over a bridge, and he gets pulled into a sewer pipe, which is I think was kind of like a little like head nod to Stephen King's It because oh my Michael yes. Myers and Pipes have nothing in common. That's... <laughs> I thought that was so weird too, actually. I, I'm sorry, I have to I have no, to mention that too because I literally thought that as I was watching the movie and of course we, we watched this separately mm-hmm. with our partners and it's funny how we came to that same conclusion mm-hmm. but I'm like literally picturing at the same time when he walks in there like is... Um, it gonna like come out and start dancing and you know like the newer movies like the remake there's that moment in the part one where he does the little like dance thing oh my goodness and it's so and it became a meme and i'm like picturing him doing that in the middle of the sewer like while he's also like yeah like (laughs) yeah no one can see us right now but we're doing (laughs) a little dance this is halloween this is halloween (laughs) sorry so go on about the pipe oh yeah (laughs) the 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 sewer pipe yes we'll be specific the sewer pipe Um, folks (laughs) <laughs> they, they have um, Michael. Michael brings him into the sewer. They have this moment where it's almost like immediate. My first thought was like, are they like switching bodies or something? Mm, but mm-hmm. I think what's happening is the because in the beginning they're talking about how Michael Myers is the uh, is the personification of pure evil. Yes, and Lori with her book. Yes, right? yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. So there is this moment where like they're looking into each other's eyes, and it's almost as if. Some of that darkness leads Michael Myers and into Corey because on a spiritual level, in my beliefs, like Corey is already beat down to the point where any type of invasion of energy, whether it's positive or negative, he is very susceptible to to it latching onto him. And I think mm-hmm. that's why it it, it, <laughs> Sorry. it took over so going him. On the sewer. <laughs> so he Later, he goes by to Laurie and Allison's place to apologize from the night before. Um, and he is literally lurking behind the bush yes. like Michael Myers in the very first Super movie. Super creepy. Yes. Like a total creeper. Yes. <laughs> so Laurie is a little concerned. She goes outside. Naturally. Naturally. Same girl. I would not go outside. Be like my granddaughter. Mm. Yeah. Wants to take Allison and apologize. And so they leave. They're spending the day together. And while they're spending the day together, he admits to killing someone. 
um, because before this, he did end up killing, and technically it was self-defense, but he, he did end up killing um, a homeless man when he left the pipe, the, the sewer pipe. She grabs his hand because she thinks he's talking about um, little boy Jeremy from the beginning. And she's like, look, it, you know, I understand. It's okay. Like, you didn't really do it. But he doesn't understand that she is thinking about Jeremy and he's trying to tell her, hey, I did something bad. So yeah, she's that was validating. Very interesting. I thought that too. She's validating, like, it's okay. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. But there's, miscommuni- <laughs> <No. laughs> there's some miscommunication there. Yeah. And so they end up going back to Jeremy's house where the trauma began, mm-hmm. maybe to do some like inner healing, but really like he's just revisiting that night and reopening that wound with her. Yeah. It wasn't like a positive thing. It no. ended up being more of like a, I don't know, still transformative into like this. Allison is starting to mistake his toxic behaviors as chivalrous, accepting maybe this is her accepting the love that she thinks that she deserves. Yeah. I, I think this is a really good point to really bring up that, again, I know we talked about it earlier, but there's a huge theme, I think, throughout the movie in trauma bonding, mm-hmm. right? So I think there's a lot of red flags that happen throughout this movie with Allison and Corey. And, like, Allison just blows right through those red flags. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you were planning to bring it up, but, like, there's a point where she even, like, notices that, like, his hand that was injured is infected. Mm -hmm. But, like, the infection itself being kind of a symbol of the kind of dark path that he's going on and the Mm -hmm. evil festering within him and his trauma festering within him. And she's just like, Oh look, it's infected. And then like keeps going. And I feel like that in itself was a symbol for the other more obvious points of red flags that came up that she continued to ignore. And again, like I'm like, man, I see myself in her with some of my past, not so great relationships. And you know, you, you can never see it. It's always so hard on yourself, but it's so easy to pick out and be like, Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, Allison, like take a hint, take a hint. Right. And I'm like, please. And she's just, yeah, not doing it. But I think we've all been a Corey or an Allison in some way or another, Mm -hmm. maybe not Mm -hmm. necessarily like like killing people or dating (laughs) a killer. Yeah, I certainly hope. (laughs) God, I hope, I hope if anybody out there has ever dated a killer, like, I'm so sorry. But yeah. I, I, I'm sure we've all blown through some red flags before. We've all exactly. tried to <laughs> <laughs> tried to do something better. But anyway, so yep. later in the movie, Allison and Corey are out to dinner. That's when the, the toxic chivalrous behavior happens. He takes Allison home, but then the, uh, the cop from earlier, um, which I know we didn't talk about right now, but again, if you watch the movie, you know what we're talking about. Her ex-boyfriend, Doug, is following Corey. And this isn't necessarily important, but I, I love some comical relief in mm, horror films mm-hmm. and Corey has the cop follow him to where the um, sewer pipe is and he he both he and Michael Myers kill this cop and while they are both attacking him he Michael Myers gets hit in the head and Corey starts yelling at Michael get up get up and I know that Michael's wearing a mask but you can just like see all over his uh, body language he's like I'm feeling a little woozy here man like <laughs> yeah, I'm like, trying hey man I'm in my 60s can you give me a moment like yeah. I'm Michael Myers but also my back hurts and I have issues with my knees right. now like I, which I do in my 30s so I can't imagine a freaking psychopath serial killer who's as strong as he is like we see him literally in other moments like lift people into the air and stab them still but this dude has got to be in 60s right? right like and eating sewer no. rats for the last four years yeah like this dude come on he needs some help yeah but he's also michael myers right so <laughs> later Corey shows back at allison's house and he's panicking and he's all like i don't know what's going on with me allison is showing some compassion for mm-hmm, him mm-hmm. um like she wanted when i noticed this like she wanted other people to have for her yeah, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. when she was like, hey, I need some help. And everyone's like, oh, you're just the granddaughter of Laurie Strode. Like, yeah, no one gives your, a shit. Yeah, your great uncle is Michael freaking Myers. Like, your family's fucked us up. Your your life may as well be messed up as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Later, Corey gets home to his mother's house, mother and father's house where he oh, lives. I <sighs> <laughs> Honey, I know. His mother. We are shown... That is one of the creepiest parts of this movie. Can we just say? Like, yes. his mother is... Very much Norman Bates. Yes. 
Norman, Norman Bates's Bates. mom, she, dear lord. She not only like Whew. pretends. There's not only like inclination that there's a, a an ancestral relationship happening. She oh, dead so ass gross. just like plants one on his face. Dead ass. And then his father <laughs> just looks at him and goes, "I hope you can find love someday." <sighs> I'm like, I hope that maybe one day you have the balls to leave your wife. And even like the way the mom treats Lori too, right? right? Like, and I know we didn't talk about that, but like the way that she treats her, like when she comes by, Lori's like, her, she has this like WTF moment on her mm-hmm. face. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm having that same moment right now. Cause what in the fuck is wrong with this lady? Right. Like, Ooh. So <laughs> I took that moment as a an opportunity for the audience to question if there was if it was a nature versus nurture mm. kind of situation, mm-hmm. you know, because the relationships between family members like that, especially if they start at a young age, could essentially really twist somebody up. And trigger warning for anybody and who may have experienced sexual abuse by a relative, and we're terribly sorry if that has happened to you. Obviously, we hope that you are doing the necessary work to work on yourself and to improve your quality of life. But I think that was a really good opportunity for the the, the person who's watching the movie to think, you know, did these problems with Corey start in the home when he was younger? This, like, evilness that started to slowly grow inside mm-hmm. of him? Or was it because of the environment that he was in and all mm-hmm. of this hatred that that community had on him. Yeah. And then he meets Michael Myers and he's like, fuck this. I'm just going to be a go keep go be a killer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, like, I, and, and actually like wanting to add on to that is like, you know, and, and to your point about like making a clarification is that mental health doesn't mean that you're going to be a serious mental health issues does not mean that you're going to, you should turn into a serial killer or anything. Like you go down this dark path, like, psych related type of healthcare. Like there are some times, like when you look back on someone who has done things, there are a variety of different like triggers, genetic related type of things and stuff that can be that. But just because you have a mental illness doesn't mean you go down this route. But for him, there's a multitude of things that could be at play. And I like talk about that, that cop moment, right? Like, or I'm sorry, not the cop. I'm getting confused between characters now, but the, sorry, the father, the father of Jeremy, when they go to the bar, yeah. And the father says something about like the boy that cut my grass didn't kill my son, but the man yes. that I saw on the side of the road, he's going down a dark path. Yeah. Yes. That's not the, the boy that I knew mm-hmm. and like something different in his eyes. And then he talked about like, he didn't know if it was something that had happened in his past or something, you know, what, sh- what shapes a killer. Right. right. And I feel like we're seeing a lot of that in current media and different like things. So I thought it was interesting that it came up in this movie. You know, there's a lot of documentaries out and things about serial killers. And I think they really brought that up and, Then also relating that all the way back to Michael too, right? Like what triggered Michael? And there's a lot of different movies, different remakes and things in the franchise that Mm -hmm. have explored like Michael's just this way or did something happen to him due to his family life? Whatever Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. could have triggered that change, right? Right. yeah. So between that moment and the very end, which we, the big moment where it, everything arrives, at this point, Corey murders seven individuals. Punks. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot. It's a lot for um, over a, what, a two, three day span. Yeah. His father gets murdered. Um, the punks from earlier, um, the homeless man and his mother mm-hmm. are now all under his responsibility. So at the, uh, at the moment we've all been <laughs> waiting for. So Halloween. It is Halloween night, as usual, and Lori pours herself a drink and pulls out her gun and calls 911 to report a suicide. We watch her shoot a pumpkin the moment before Corey walks in to her room, and she deadass looks at himself, and she goes, did you really think I would try to kill myself? Oh, my God, uh, that moment. What? That what was a, so what good. A, what, she's, she's a bad bitch. Was yes. My, what was, what's that bad bitch song? <sighs> No, no, you're putting me but, on the but spot. But you know what I'm talking yes, about. I know what you're talking about. That's I need the TikTok. That's my best friend. She's the yes, bitch. there you go. There yes. you go. Yes. I, I was like, get it, Laurie. Get oh it. Oh, my God. The Scream Queen. Like, the, the scream. Queen. Which, if nobody knows, her mother was the original Scream Queen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. From? Uh, you're pointing at me like I'm going to know. <laughs> from, from Psycho, right? Psycho, which, yes. which is interesting because we brought up Norman Bates. So, right. yes. She gets killed in the shower. Yes. With... Hershey's syrup. Yeah. 
I love um, our sound effects, by the way. I, this I, is not a soundboard. This is all custom made just for you guys today. So we want you to know that this is Oh, us. honey, I am a natural this soundboard, is, and I, I will hold that yes. in my chest. Yeah, Jaren's especially good at it. I'm, I'm pretty mediocre, but we're we're making this custom for all of you and our audience. We, we want you to know that. Yes. That's how special you are to yes. us. <laughs> she shoots him twice with her gun. Um, he falls over the stairs, down the banister, onto the floor. Um, very similar, like, little Jeremy from the mm, beginning. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She offers up a fight to him. She's all like, come on, fight me. Like, let's get this over with. I'm ready to face my She's fears. so badass. So badass. <laughs> he hears Allison's car pulling up to the house. And he says something along the lines of, like, if nobody can have her. And then takes in a not not takes his own life yet but he stabs himself in the neck and Lori freaks out which is so funny cuz she's like I'm ready to fight you and kill you but like you can't kill yourself I have to be the one to do yeah, it yeah 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 <laughs> she because there's no fight there right so she pulls the knife out of his throat and that's the second that Allison walks into the house mm-hmm. and she sees her grandmother over her dying creepy ass boyfriend's body <laughs> she freaks out and she runs out understandable you're running away from your problems you're running away from another problem here mm-hmm. allison leaves and now we notice that mr michael is in the house yep. and we're not gonna get too much in the details but there is the typical Lori versus michael myers fight that's been happening for 44 years um she does a really great job she n- literally knifes him into a table i loved it Allison turns around, decides to come back, and she assists her grandmother in finishing off this fight with Michael once and for all. And she's all like, I'm not going to let this happen to you. Not again. And then the town has a nice bonding moment. Yeah. And it was very strange, but then I understood it. Yes. Another Mm -hmm. community moment where a town that has been terrorized by this one specific individual Mm -hmm. is all getting together and laying this man to rest they parade him through the entire town like he's um afloat and the town follows laurie and allison and the police to the junkyard which is where Corey's father it's Corey's father's business and they turn on the little scrapper and they put his body in Mm -hmm. now there is one thing that i did not mention and that is that michael myers mask was left behind Yes, and, I'm like, why? Why that suggestion at the very end and then it's just like pan through because it's in Lori's house, right? right because, and I was literally, if you didn't mention that, I was going to bring it up and be like, bitch, what did you think of that mask at the end? Do you think it's over? Because Corey, <laughs> Corey went to Michael to take the mask and said, you're just a man with a mask. And yeah. then that's when he killed off uh, those uh, five or six, seven other people. Mm-hmm. So it's like, mm-hmm. you know, does the evil, is it the man or is it the mask? That yeah. creates this um, evil character. But yeah, spooky, I, I, I would like to think that it is over. Um, because at this point, like with my favorite franchise, you you if you if you try to pull it further, I mean, you're just going to ruin what it is. Yeah, you're going to make just someone else pick up the mask and something right. like that. And I feel like there's something to be said about Michael himself, even though, yes, he's just a man. He's obviously someone who has escaped so many times. He's so intelligent in yeah. terms of how he moves, how he, you know, has stayed strong for that many years. Like even for a serial killer, like that takes a lot. And I don't think that there's like many other people out there. Like you, cause you saw this, the struggles of Corey, like you mm-hmm. saw like every time Michael stepped in, it was like, man, this like, dude who is kind of almost like serving as his weird like mentor of yeah. like becoming a serial killer steps in and just like dominates yet this dude is in his 60s and Corey can barely maintain his composure at you know what is he like let's say like 21 22 ish years old right yeah. so i thought that was interesting and i don't think it would be he's he's not really like replaceable even though yes I think people say that he's just a man because they want to feel better. Right. Uh, And that's them dealing with the trauma of Mm -hmm. Michael in the town and them having to say, like, well, he was just a man. He isn't a boogeyman. He isn't something that's paranormal. He is a man who is also extremely evil. And we finally got rid of him, so now we can be safe, like you said. Like, seeing that visual of him actually dying for the community was helpful but i did think it was interesting that they had some paranormal aspects to this movie right like Mm -hmm. you mentioned with his moment with Corey and stuff and like Mm -hmm. was there this like evil presence that was like passing between the two of them or just like or is it just like really a filming symbol for like evil and their relationship and him having this weird connection right so because they're not related yeah 
literally Corey had Michael had nothing to do with Corey's life up until Lori and Corey. Which is, yeah. Could you imagine a couple Lori and Corey? <laughs> well, for one, they're white. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Corey. Uh, or, I mean, well, Allison and Corey, right? Like, I mean, that's also... <laughs> well, I, I know I'm just, like, thinking, like, people who, like, who have rhyme, rhyming names. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, Lori and Jory, which that's, I don't even know that's a real name. Jory. But... I mean, it probably is. So what what did you, what did you actually think of the movie? Did you like it? Like, Girl, <laughs> you, you put did Jamie you Lee Curtis... Anything that Jamie Lee Curtis does... Oh, God. Which, another yeah. movie by her that we... I still need you to watch so that we can talk about everything, everywhere, all at once. <gasps> I still really want to watch that. Like, genuinely, mm. absolutely artistic, like, uh, genius movie that I've heard about. And, like, you keep telling me about it and I really need I to know. finally just watch you, it. Yes. You want to know... You want to talk about symbolism and things yeah, that I saw. Yeah, let's get... Let's delve deep. We need to make that. Yeah. We definitely okay. need to make that an episode. We'll, Let we'll me, add that in. Yes. Uh, especially if we get some good feedback from this episode about talking about movies and stuff. Cause I, I would like to watch that and then us talk yes. about it. That'd be fun. So, so yeah. And, and you know, folks at home or in your car or in your shower, I mean, I'm trying to think of all the places that I listen to podcasts, <laughs> which is basically any time of the day that I'm not like doing either of my three jobs. Um, <laughs> what did you think of the movie? And yeah. we would love to know like what you felt about the movie and you know, did, I didn't even ask you how you felt with me. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's okay. I mean, I was just letting you roll with it. I was having fun hearing about your experience with it. But as you can probably tell, I freaking loved it. Like, I know I got like maybe some in between ratings. I didn't end up actually reading like critics reviews or anything. But like, I know I got like kind of like 40s, 50% Rotten Mm -hmm. Tomatoes kind of thing. And I'm like, maybe people just like there were different expectations for the movie. Mm -hmm. But like, I know we talked about it earlier on that like it's not it's not meant to be a truly scary movie that gets you out of like jumping, like jump scares or things like that. And if people are going into the movie for that, I can understand if you came out kind of disappointed because it's not like that. It's there's an ode to the original slasher type film. Mm -hmm. There's an ode to some of the original actors um, of the earlier films in that. So there's, there's other people that have carried on that mantle too, that are in this movie that have past links to Halloween as well, which we didn't mention, but you know, Jamie Lee Curtis is just such a freaking badass. I love everything that she does. That um, Knives Out movie was freaking mm. hilarious. Like, I love that movie. Like, she's funny. She's witty. She's great in horror. And, like, she doesn't take herself too seriously either. Like, I follow her on Facebook. I'm, I'm a huge fan of her. And I will always watch anything that she does. So, yeah. I really enjoyed this movie. I love the Halloween franchise as well. So, yeah. I think we're in agreement on that one. But, yeah, I, you know, going back to what you were saying for our audience, you know, please let us know how you guys felt. If you guys want to discuss stuff that we talked about with the movie, please, you know, tag us um, and Instagram, make a post on our Facebook community page. We would love to hear from you. Yeah. So um, thank you so much for listening to us today. Um, We really appreciate it. Again, if we've talked so much that you've forgotten what our names are, (laughs) my name is Jaren. I'm Heather. We are Typically Divergent. And if you like what we did on today's episode, come be Typically Divergent with us on Facebook and Instagram. We also have our link tree added in the show notes where you can find all of our social media platforms and ways that you can follow and communicate with us. Until next week, we hope you have a happy Halloween. And Samhain. And And remember, remember, we we are are all the final girl in our own story. story.